Hi! In this lesson, we'll take a look at methods that can be used with ArrayLists. In the last lesson, we learned that ArrayLists are mutable objects that store object references. We can use ArrayLists by importing the java.util class ArrayList and initializing an ArrayList by specifying what data type will be stored in the ArrayList. In order to make use of the ArrayLists we create, we need to learn some of the methods that make them useful. ArrayLists offer a series of methods that allow us to alter the state of an ArrayList. In this lesson, we are going to explore some of the more useful methods that may be tested on the AP exam. The first method we're going to look at is the add method. The add method adds an object to the end of an ArrayList. When we add an initial value, it will be placed at the zeroth index. The add method returns the value true when the ArrayList is able to successfully add a value to the end. As we can see here, as we add values to the list, those values are now populated in the ArrayList at the next available index. We can also add values to ArrayLists at a particular index. The add method is overloaded to also accept the index at which we would like to add that particular value. In this example, we would like to add the value 15 to the index position 2. When the value is added to the list, the values at index 2 and higher are then shifted up one index. The previous index 2, which held a value of 10, is now found at index 3, and the value 5 is now found at index 4. The next method we're going to look at is the get method. Similar to indexing arrays, the get method allows us to access the value of an array at a particular index by returning that value to the program. In this example, the variable val is being assigned the value of list index 1, which in this case is 3. The next method we're going to look at is the size method. The size method returns the number of values that are currently hosted in the array list. When we print the value of this array list originally, we see that the value is 4. After we add a value to the list and check the size again, we can see the value has changed to reflect how many items are in the array list. Unlike arrays, the length of an array list will change depending on how many values are populated at any given time. This method can be very useful in the debugging process, as it can help verify if you have the correct number of values in a given array list. It's important to remember that the value of size will always be one greater than the highest index value. This is because our arrays start at index 0. To access the final index in an array list, we can use list.get list.size minus 1. Now that we know how to add and get objects from our array lists, we need to know how we can change those same values. The set method replaces the current value at an index with a given value. In this example, we are setting the index 2 to the new value of 34. We can see that the value of index 2 in the list is then changed to reflect that value. The set method also returns the value that is being replaced to the existing program. We can store the value that has been replaced in a variable of its own. If we were to print the variable val, the result would be 10, which was the value that was replaced at index 2. Lastly, we can also remove elements from an ArrayList. The remove method removes an element at the specified index. In this example, we are removing the value currently housed in index 2. When the item is removed, the values at index 3 and higher are then shifted down one spot to condense the size of the ArrayList. Now the index 2 holds the value 4, which was previously at index 3. Like the set method, the remove method returns the value that is being removed from the array list. If we were to print the variable val after assigning it to list.remove2, the value printed would be 10, the previous element at index 2. You may have noticed that the methods associated with array lists are very similar to that of arrays. In this table, you can see that arrays and array lists share a lot of the same functionality across the two data structures. What sets array lists apart is the fact that they can manipulate the size of the data structure using the remove and add methods. These provide array lists with more flexibility if the data that you are using fluctuates in size frequently. Now that you've learned more about array list methods, let's get some practice in the editor.